Hi, my name is Mohammed. I'm a PhD student at Stevens Institute of Technology and I'm working on a project called Krypton Tagging Velocimetry. So what this technique is, it's a well, velocimetry means measuring velocity and how we measure velocity is by using something called Krypton Tagging. So what this technique does is, is it allows us to make measurements of velocity in high-speed gas flow. So for example, in a wind tunnel, we can, we can set this experiment up and we can measure the velocity at various points. And that's useful because in a wind tunnel, we can put some test articles like airfoils or spheres or whatever geometry we want to study. And we can use this technique to measure the velocity around that object or the surface or whatever have you. And this allows us to get the velocity data from which we can extrapolate uh, quantities such as stresses, turbulence, turbulent quantities, and other important important features that we need to study. So, what this, how this basically works, is it utilizes the fluorescence of of krypton atoms. What fluorescence is is, so you have atoms in the ground state initially, and atoms also have various higher energy states. So, what we do is we take the atoms in the ground state and we hit them with a laser. This laser makes them come up from the ground state to some excited state. Now this excited state is not the natural or stable state of the atom. It has to go back to the ground state. And when it goes back to the ground state, this extra energy that's in here has to be given off in some fashion. And usually what happens is it's given off as a photon. So this is the energy and that's equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. So this energy is given off as a photon. Now this photon is in the, it's not in, it's not always in the visible region, so we can't always see it. Sometimes we can. But this photon can be picked up by a very special camera. So we have a special camera that detects photons like these, and when we can, and this what what the effect that this has basically makes the flow field glow. And we'll show that in a little bit. So when the flow field glows, we can see where those atoms are. We can take two pictures the one before and one after, and then in those pictures we can see where that fluorescence line, as we call it, moves. So we know how much it moves by, we know what the time between those two images is, we can get the velocity just by distance divided by time. And that is the basic outline of how this technique works. So this is what we call a shock tube. It's a shock tube is a device that's used to create shock waves, and what shock waves are, are those curves that you see in front of airplanes when they go supersonic. So that little curve on the front, which sometimes you can see, is called a shock wave. And what basically what it is, it's, it's just a really very, very strong pressure wave. And when it passes over a certain region, all the properties like temperature, density, pressure, they all jump up really, really quickly and really and up to really, really high values depending on how strong the shock is. So we create those we create shock waves in here and we can create shock waves of various strengths. And what we want to do is we want to study the flow behind the shock wave. So as the, sho as the shock wave passes over a, in our case, a surface, what happens to the flow directly behind it? So we have the concept of the boundary layer. So we want to study how that grows and you know, what the profile looks like and so on and so forth. So this is the sho shock tube. It has two parts. This side is called the driven section. The one at the very end, which is kind of hard to see, that's called the driver section. So this, the driven section is at low pressure. Uh, typically a thousandth of an atmosphere. The driver section is at one atmosphere currently. We can of course change it if you want to, but this creates a shock wave of, uh, if you do one, a thousandth of an atmosphere, we get a shock wave with a Mach number of three, roughly. And then we can study the flow behind it. So we have the shock tube here. We have a special camera to pick up those photons that create the uh, fluorescence lines right here. And over here we have the laser. So the laser is tuned to a specific wavelength because that's the wavelength we need for the krypton atoms. The wavelength is around 212 nanometers. So the laser, so the laser comes out from here and we have a bunch of optics that direct it towards the test section. And inside the test section we have a little surface that we want to study the flow on. And over here we have the different gas mixtures. So in order for the technique to work we need to uh, insert krypton into the flow field and the way we do that is we get mixtures of nitrogen and krypton and nitrogen, oxygen and krypton, depending on if you want to study air or just nitrogen. And then we feed that into the into our driven section, which is our test section in this case. Then we pump it down to a low pressure and we run the experiment. 
So we're gonna do an experiment really quickly here and what you can see is we have the laser and out from the laser we have the beam coming in. This is ultraviolet in the 212 nanometer range and this gets bounced around into a test section over here and then in our test section we have a curved surface where we want to study the flow behind. So on the screen you can see the image from the camera. This is the fluorescence line that I mentioned earlier. So it's a straight line. What's going to happen is as soon as my lab mate starts the shock tube, this line is going to move to the right. right. Then we have two images, one like this, one with the line moved to the right. We can back out what the velocity is fairly easily. So we're going to do an experiment. You ready, David? Yeah. It's armed? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, acquire. All right. It did work, just, yeah, it popped the surface, that's why it didn't. Did you change the contrast? Yep, but they changed the contrast. That's the right step. So you it's right here. Curve, then. Yeah, it's there. Uh, yeah, it's not straight at all, which is good. Yeah, so it was here. Mm -hmm. I should be off, which it is. Very hard to see. <laughs> but it's the grainier line that's to the right. Yeah, this line right here. Yeah. So before before the shock went over it, it was, the line was right here. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as the shock went over it, moved to the right. Got it. Was a slight thing. Cool. And from this we can back up what the velocity is.